What's up YouTube, Evans B here. Although I am a huge fan of soft battery light, hard light is becoming a great tool in my portfolio in order to add the diversity or things that are really special. So one of the tools I've been using recently to add diversity to my work is a tool that has been used uh, forever since the beginning of cinematography and it's called the Gobo. So let me introduce you the Gobo. Here it is. So the Gobo is also called a light projector. So now before I really get into this video, I have to disclose something. This modifier is not for beginners. I repeat, it's not for beginners. So if you're just starting out with photography, or if you're just starting out with flash, this is most probably not the best tool for you because this is a very difficult piece of equipment to manipulate and to integrate into your shoots. So be aware. So with that said, let's talk about the Gobo. So the Gobo was invented a long time ago and it stands for goes in between optics. There's another variant of the Gobo. It's also called goes before optics. In any way you want to pronounce it or you want to call it, the Gobo presents the advantage that you can shape a light in any shape or form that you really want it to. Sincerely, creativity is the only limit to how you're going to use a Gobo. So that's really up to the user to figure out like very creative ways and there are endless patterns possible. Let's take a look at why. So for the modern lighting artists, such as ourselves, the Gobo presents the advantage that you can actually create a lot of diversity in your work or in your lighting without really breaking the bank. One of these units uh, on the online market could run about $100 to $150, depending on if you have a good deal or not. But typically, on any given day, you can get this for about 150 bucks. So with that in mind, let's review how it works. A gobo like this one starts with a basic secular pattern that you can focus or defocus, kind of similar to a lens. You can use it to simulate a stage projector or create a nice ring effect behind your subject to bring the attention to whatever part you want to bring attention to. By adding a metal card to your gobo or anything that resembles a shape, or it goes in between the optics. You can recreate any shape that you want with a lighting pattern. And then when you have your shape, you can either focus it or defocus it to the way you want to at the time. So this is my opinion where the creativity really begins, as I said earlier. So you probably know the company called Roscoe. Uh, they make gels, uh, typically that's what they sell the best, and filters, but they also make uh, gobo inserts, or so goes in between the optics inserts that range from metal to glass to gel to pretty much whatever you like. And you can even make some custom ones if you upload your own designs and they'll print one for you. So there are multiple versions of the Gobo. The classic one, which is the most popular one that I think that you can find is this one. This particular one has a glass element in front of it that basically can, you can focus and defocus using a small ring. And you can bring it forward and backward using a little focus ring that is sitting on top. And in between here, you can actually insert the pattern that you want or the color that you want in front. Again, compared to the rest of the models, uh, this one requires a bit more work since the uh, opening of the optic is actually quite large and it's, um, it creates medium shape patterns. That's why having a gobo that is a circle will clean up that pattern uh, very nicely. The second item that you can see is the lens assisted gobo. So this one has a, is the same principle as this one. The big difference between that unit and the lens assisted one is that you can actually use a lens, uh, typically either 85 or a 50 millimeter. It doesn't have to be a great one, just a cheap one that can focus and defocus that you can actually shape the light using the lens and basically you can focus it very easily using the very, very smooth focusing ring that is typical on any lens, even a cheap young new ones. However, if you're on a budget and you're tight on money, adding this lens element will basically bump up the price by the amount of the lens, plus the technology is typically a little more expensive. So you have to keep that in mind when you're shopping around for your Gobo. And the last version of the Gobo is called the Conical Snoot. This one barely passes as a Gobo since uh, it doesn't really uh, focus the light that much. Uh, it's not really precise, but we kind of have to pass it through because it is one of the three possible Gobos that you have. This one works particularly as a stack of cones and at the end you can add your little insert either to gel it or to give it a special color or also to add some patterns but they're not extremely sharp. Uh, typical usage of this one 
would be in product photography. Uh, again, it's not very expensive. It's about $25 for a metal one and less for a plastic one. So this is a very, very, very budget friendly, but none that I would recommend if you don't do products. With that said, uh, here are my impressions of using a snoot. And for this one, I, uh, I've been using it actually for six months, uh, doing different tests and different shoots, just to see how it behaves. And it's very complicated, but the results are also satisfying when you nail that one shot. Again, there are a few things that I took out from using the Gobo, uh, which I will give you in a second. First being, it requires a ton of patience. So one, to basically create your concept and then uh, getting the, all the elements and then placing your light. And then when you have the light placed on, then you have to focus it, and then you have to make sure the exposure is correct, and you have to make sure you have either a fill light or no fill light at all. It's a really, really complicated tool to use. Um, so again, if you typically go very fast on your photo shoots, uh, this one will slow you down to a crawl because it is not designed to go fast. It is designed basically to uh, have a very precise light, which precision requires patience and requires a lot of work. So keep that in mind. If you're running and gunning, this is not for you. But if you want to create works of art or something more researched or maybe more worked or produced, uh, this would be a good tool to have. The second item that I noticed that you really need when using this is a strong modeling light. I've been using it uh, mainly with the 8600, uh, the manual version, not the pro version, which has the 30 watt. Uh, the original 8600 has a 10 watt modeling light and it is, it is very complicated uh, to use it with a non-powerful modeling light being that you can't see the actual way that the actual light hits so you have to be uh keep in mind that um you, you can either, either close all the lights and basically just like make sure you capture your pattern and your subject doesn't move or get a light like the 8400 pro or the 8600 pro that you can actually uh, see what you're hitting and also request some feedback from the subject ask him does it hit your light does it hit your face, can you see it in your eyes, etc., etc., which will help you basically figure out I'm at the right place or I'm just totally off. And the third thing that I noticed by using this particular unit is the build quality. So the build quality for this unit is okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to say the greatest thing ever. Uh, I think, and I know for a fact that there are some better options out there, but they are much more expensive. If I think I've uh, been on set with the Pro Photo, the uh, the zoom light that they have and it's pretty awesome but it is twice as big uh, a little heavier but it's much better built and it focuses really really sharply compared to uh, this one which works basically broadly on any light um, that but then that is is a lot of work to get it the way you, exactly the way you want to so this you have to keep in mind is that this particular one is only 150 bucks which is great but the quality of it is not so great so uh, if ever you are um, a little impatient or you want something that is better, I would recommend going to the second Gobo option, as I stated earlier, which is the lens assisted Gobo. This one is, uh, is again, much produces much faster. It is more expensive, but it is more precise and will get you there faster than using this. But again, if you're on the budget, this might be it. Oh, and I forgot the last thing, really, the really last thing. It's interesting that you can actually create your own patterns and it's super simple. So simple that actually that I'll show you, uh, I'll be posting another video in about a week telling you exactly how to create new uh, shapes because the selection that they give you, they give you about five of these and they are limited, but like so limited and so useless that I wouldn't dare using them. So I'll show you uh, in the next video that will be uh, posted on this channel, so make sure you subscribe to see it. I'll be showing you how to create those little things um, in a very cheap manner that you can use and you can actually custom made anything that you want. But overall, the addition of having a optical snoot or gobo in this case is really, really freeing. Uh, I'm seeing, uh, I think it's going to be more and more trending in a future month, in 2020 specifically. Uh, we're going to see more and more light patterns. We started seeing it a bit, uh, maybe three years ago, using the sun as a very hard source. But overall, having a snoot in the studio has actually been a big help to basically, if I want to just take it out and basically see what can I do today with this? Or um, is there something that I've seen uh, in nature by looking at hard light that by taking out my snoot or my, uh, my gobo, sorry, does it, what can I create with this? And it basically just opens up a lot of doors that 
would not have been open with the typical softbox or the typical strip box or the Chinese lantern as I reviewed before. Um, the fact that it's less light is so specific also shows maybe a bit more control over what you're doing. And um, this in this era of like going fast and just doing mass produced stuff, uh, slowing down, taking your time, shaping your light, getting it just perfectly crisp and right, and then going in post and making it even more perfect. It's something that we can't really dismiss and something that I'm looking forward to using more and more. But as you may have seen, I have overlaid some behind the scenes of uh, this uh, modifier being in action. And I just want to show some example of uh, some, basically some shots that I took and how they look. So here are a few. As you can see, I use either very weird objects such as a cauldron or as a, or basically a drainer, a pasta drainer or feathers or anything basically that can come to your mind. And that's the beautiful thing about this modifier is that you can actually uh, use many, many things to create many, many shapes or sh uh, shadows or shapes. So whatever comes to your mind and uh, going in your kitchen becomes a new adventure in lighting, which is not something that all the modifiers can claim that you can do. So after watching this, Will you be getting a gobo? If so, and if uh, you are on the market for one, I listed three options, basically relating to the ones that I said, which is the classic one, or the second being being the lens assisted uh, gobo or snoot or whatever you want to call it, and the third one being the excessively budget friendly uh, gobo, uh, which I don't really hardly recommend if you're not in product photography, but you might need uh, for other reasons. Again, I posted all these links below, and if you purchase them using those links, again, you're assisting that channel and helping me buy more and more modifiers and trying out new lighting techniques so I can share them with you because I just share whatever I do. There's no secret behind photography except hard work and learning about these new techniques. So again, a big thank you for using those links that are provided in the description below. So that's it for this video. Uh, that wraps it up. Again, uh, I just want to reiterate that this not for beginners. Uh, if ever you just got into lighting, maybe this is not for you, but if you are uh, on the like intermediate or to like a high level person in the studio, then this might be really cool because this will open up many possibilities and I believe uh, this will be trending in a few months. So like, catch a wave early, get yourself one of those and then hop on the trend that I'm just creating, which is using gobos. So if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please do. Uh, this will help you basically be notified of the next video and when the second video about building those logos in between will be released, you'll be the first to know and you'll be the first to be notified. Also, if you have any questions about using the Gobo in any practical matter, uh, please do so in the comments below. Again, I want to give you a big thank you for watching. I hope you appreciated this and as always, happy shooting and cheers.